Um, this is going to be the first session of a number of sessions that I'm going to do, hopefully uh, weekly, at least very regularly. Uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, thoughts and ideas on how you might be able to uh, get better at the game, improve your skills, and, and essentially prepare for next season, which for most of us will be in September. Um, I know we've got a few people on here that are from uh, the, uh, the Philippines and possibly Vietnam as well and some other countries. So if your uh, season doesn't match up with the one that I'm involved in, which start in September and finish in April or May, uh, then, you know, just take the, the, the things that we say here and use them appropriately for your season, whenever that might be. Uh, if you are still playing uh, and you're in England and, you know, you're involved in Final Fours, then good luck to you. Uh, keep working. And, you know, the things that we share here, some of them may have may be relevant to you right now and you could implement right away to help you uh, with your your current season. Um, and then others you can you can look at when you finish playing. OK, uh, just once again, I remind everybody to mute your mics if you can. I think everybody has done that. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'm going to speak now for 20 minutes or, or 30 minutes, something like that. And then I'll open up for questions. I'll try to keep it brief. I'm going to try to keep it on point. Give you things that you you can use. You don't use them. I don't care. I'm just going to give you some experience from the the places that I've been, uh, the the experiences that I've had, and what I've seen work. Uh, in other players, in other teams, and for other coaches, and also uh, what has worked for me and what continues to work for me, all right? At the end, when you get a chance to ask questions, uh, do it in the chat. You can send it to me directly or share it with everyone. And um, seeing, well, depending on how that goes, I'll either answer all of them right now uh, um, at the end of the session, or I will take some of them away, create some videos, and, and send them out, all right? And then I'll be sharing this for all of you guys on email. So if you if you have to go or if somebody misses this, then you can catch up later. All right. So what we're talking about today is off season. Um, the time where, you know, the season finishes, you've been playing and training uh, all kind of year round since probably September, August, September. You've had seven, eight or nine months of competition. And now that is finished. And now you have some months in front of you, which uh, you could use to prepare for next season. Um, probably before you do that, you want to um, kind of decompress uh, and review the previous season before you step into getting ready for the next one. All right. So the first thing I'm going to say about off-season training when the season finishes is for me, the most important thing is for you to step away from the game and rest. Okay. That's the number one uh, piece of advice I think will come out of all of this for me is you have to spend some time away from the game, resting your body physically, mentally, and emotionally so that you can recharge your energy so that you can make sure that when you do come back to the game uh, and start preparing for the next season, that you have everything that you can give to it. This is probably not, this is going to go against uh, what you're being told and what you are going to uh, consume on social media for the most part um, every single day. You know, it's going to be the message on social media is you've got to work harder, you've got to work longer, you've got to give everything all of the time or else somebody's going to take over you or you're just not going to make it, all right? But it doesn't really work like that. Of course, there are times where you, you need to work, you need to put in the work and there's no question about it. If you do not put in the work and you, and you try to cut corners or you're just lazy, then yeah, you're not going to achieve your goals and you're not going to achieve anything special in anything, whether it's basketball or any other endeavor that you have. But rest is essential for progress. Okay, so if you're going to push and you're going to work, then you're going to need to allow your physical body and your mental, your brain and your mind some time to 
recuperate to uh to to step away and focus on something else and refresh okay and that transcends basketball that you know if you're getting ready for exams you cannot just study 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 go to sleep wake up study 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 and then do well in the exams all right you're going to need some mental space you're going to need physical health and you're going to need to be emotionally balanced uh, and the only way that you're going to do that is if you give yourself some rest so how do you rest uh, I would say like in terms of off season, we've got like four months. OK, May, June, July and August here in the UK uh, for everybody's off season. So I would say uh, about two weeks is a good amount of time to rest and be away from the game. So I'm saying don't play basketball. Uh, don't work out, you know, really like uh, in the kind of way that you might be training physically uh, in season or when you get ready to prepare for your season. You still definitely move, still definitely exercise, still definitely do active things like playing other sports, like playing football or throwing in American football or play tennis or something like that, but something away from the sport that you are totally focused on. Okay. And I use an analogy, right? If you're trying to remember something, like you put something down or you're in an exam and you're trying to remember the answer to a question and you can't quite get it. Right. So you, you everybody has this experience where I'm trying to find that thing or I'm trying to remember this answer. I, I know this one. Why can't I get it? The only time that you will ever get that when you're in those moments is when you let it go, when you when you, you, you give up and you say, right, OK, let me move on to the next question in the exam. Let me step away from the game of basketball for a couple of weeks. Let me look over here and see what else there is to do. Uh, or, or just, you know, not do, you know, be, be with myself for a few days. And when you create that space, when you give yourself a little bit of time, then uh, creativity is allowed to flourish. Yeah. And energy will come in. So the first kind of pillar of, of what I would like to speak about is making sure that you step away and you play other sports or you do other things uh, which um, are nothing to do with the game and give yourself a bit of space and time to um, get ready to come back in, all right? So the second thing I'm going to move on to is uh, meditation. I'm gonna suggest that you look at building a meditation practice, okay? Now, I don't, whatever meditation means to you right now, okay, I'm going to explain to you uh, why I think this is important and how you can do it. And before I do those two things, I will explain to you what meditation is for me. Okay. Meditation for me is a way of reminding myself that the only time I have is right now. So all the plans that I have in the future, all of the things that I want to achieve, all of the past experiences that I had, all of the, the good things that happened, the successes I had, the losses, you know, all of that stuff, that's all back there in the past. That's all there in the future. And there's nothing I can do about either of those things except be here right now and be me. And if I want to achieve that stuff in the future, I've got to let go of all this stuff in the past and action something right now in the, in the moment. But you, will, you do need to remind yourself of that. Otherwise, you can get caught thinking about all the things that were happening before or planning ahead so much and thinking how far you've got to go or all the things that you've got to do, all the training that you've got to do, all these people over here on social media are doing so well and I'm not there yet. You know, this is, it's, it can be very confusing. And what will happen if you get caught in this is you won't do anything. So paradoxically, if you spend a bit of time each and every day doing nothing, and I do mean essentially nothing, like not spending time on your phone, not uh, reading, not watching TV, I'm saying, I'll make some suggestions here about how you can do this in a moment. But when you spend, if you can spend some time with yourself each and every day, just a couple of minutes at least, with no fixed goal or plan, and be with yourself, first of all, that can be a kind of crazy experience to, to start to realize that a lot, you might end up thinking about a lot of stuff. 
and a lot of stuff might come into your head and you you get caught in thinking about you know what you're going to do after you finish doing this or uh why did i even start doing this or you know what 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 happened last week when i was in spain or whatever whatever um you can realize that you don't have to necessarily uh deal with those things and you can let them go by you okay and the practice of meditation is actually to understand and to realize and to remember that the things that you think about are not necessarily who you are and you can actually make a decision on what it is that you focus on and why is this important for basketball because a very easy example is if it's the end of the game and we're getting ready to have the last play whether you're on offense or defense you have to be totally in the moment you have to be totally centered and focused in that moment right there if you are at all distracted if your attention is anywhere else except on the play that is unfolding at that time you're going to miss it okay and if that means that you got the ball and you're not focused enough because you're thinking about the crowd and the pressure and the score and how long is left and the defense in front of you and the help that's coming and your your teammate is cutting there and you know what is my coach going to say if i miss this shot and blah 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 if you have all of this in your mind, it takes up mental real estate, right? And you don't have enough battery power. You don't have enough energy to focus on making a play and executing. Again, whether that be offense or defense. So a meditation practice is one that can help you to access the present moment. So when the coach is, is, is talking to you or instructing you or asking you a question in the practice, if your mind is away somewhere thinking about the mistakes that you made or the basket that you just scored or the guy that you just made fall over or what you're going to eat for dinner after practice, you're not going to be there. You're not going to be ready to answer the, the coach when they ask you the question or you're not going to be able to make the shot when you catch the ball. All right. So a meditation practice can can really help you to be present and open in the moment, which will help you to execute, to do better in the practices, in the games, in the exam room, in the classroom, and in any other area of life, full stop. Like if, even if you are not trying to achieve great things at home, when you're with your, your parents or whoever is at home, you know, being present with them is a skill that you will need to develop. All right. So meditation practice is something which you could take the summer, the off season to develop. All right. And, and, you know, for many of you here, if you are anywhere between uh, 13 and 18 years old, or even if you're older, I don't even care. You know, this is a problem that, that we all have. I, uh, I have this problem at the moment anyway. You know, we're all, we're all going through it is our phones are so close. You know, my phone is right here. Uh, I have it right here. It's never with that, never far more further away than an arm's reach. And it's very distracting. And when you get on your phone and you go on social media, there's all kinds of stuff coming at you and you get caught in these thinking about, oh, look at what that person's doing. Look at what that person's doing. Oh, I'm not doing this. Or, you know, I already did that. And, I, you know, lots of things that, that pull you in all kinds of different directions. Practices that can bring you to the present moment are going to be worth gold to you. OK, so now that there are no games and you have some time to develop this, Here's my suggestion. Develop a two minute meditation practice that you can uh, practice every single day. All right. So you just need two minutes for you. This can be after you wake up in the morning. First thing you do or after you brush your teeth, it can be in the middle of the day. It could be before you go to bed. I don't care. Find a place for you that is right that fits in with your lifestyle and will help you the most. And you may experiment with one or two of those. Okay. And I'll offer you two possible ways to do it. The first one is just by sitting. Okay. So find yourself a quiet place, turn off your phone or put it in another room so that you're not going to be distracted by it. Make sure there is nothing on, you know, no computers or anything like that. Nothing to distract you. Set a timer find a, a place where you can sit with your back straight and you can close your eyes or not make sure there's no distractions in the room and things that aren't going to take your uh, attention away and then sit for two minutes okay and just pay attention to um 
you, your breathing. Okay, so and then you can notice your breathing coming in and your breathing coming out. And if you just do this for two minutes, see if you can concentrate on that alone. All right. And you may find that distractions will come in and, and you might start thinking about something else. And as soon as you realize that, then you just come back and you say, okay, I was thinking about that, but now I'm coming back to this. Breathing in and breathing out. And the two minutes will finish and that'll be you done. And if you can keep that up over the summertime, and don't worry if you miss a day, you miss a day, it's okay, you miss two days, try to come back to it. Just like in the practice itself, if you start thinking about something, then you can remind yourself to come back to your breathing. OK, the other way you could do this is to go for a walk. OK, so depending on whatever your situation is at home um, and maybe you are, you know, if you're going to school and you're walking to school, then you or whatever else it is, you could use this as a practice that you do moving from point A to point B. Or if you like me, you know, I live on a block, you know, a, a, a circle here. My house is over here and I can walk a circle back to my house. Take me like 15 minutes. And so I can spend some time just walking and paying attention to my breathing. All right. And don't take my phone with me again. No distractions. Try not to go with anybody else so that you are by yourself. And this practice will really help you to center. And yeah, it's a. Uh, something which I, I suggest all of you try to do. And if you can try to do it for seven days in a row, then you can start to build a, a practice, all right? Okay, um, the next thing that I'm going to suggest uh, you do is write. Write down, okay? So get yourself a notebook, okay? If you don't have one already, get something like this, a notebook where you can write things, okay? and if you can develop a writing practice, this will help you in so many ways. All right, here are some examples of things that you could write. First of all, you could write about your goals. Write down your goals. What do you want to achieve? So right now we're getting, we're, we're towards the end of April. We're headed to um, the off season here in the UK, in England. So what are your goals for the next four months? When you arrive in September, uh ready to start the new season what position do you want to be in write those things out be as detailed as possible uh there is a process that you can go through i'm going to be sharing a lot about that uh in in the in the coming weeks all right but the first thing is just to write okay Th there's a huge difference between having ideas and goals in your mind and writing them down and there is an even e an equally if not bigger difference in writing them down and then telling somebody else. Okay, so as soon as you take steps to making things a bit more concrete and a bit more real, then they start to become more real and you also start to be reminded of things that you need to do to get towards those goals. Okay, so goals is something you can start to write down. What is it that you want? What do you want in your life? You know, for the next four months or the next four years, start writing those things down. Even if you have no idea what those things are, if you just start writing by September, I want to be or I want to have and see what happens when you when you when you write with your pen on the paper. OK, any questions about that? Send them in the chat. Let me know or I'll show you I'll share my um, social media stuff later on and you can send me a message. OK, other things that you could write about um, are daily schedules. OK, so if you start with goals and you write down, these are my goals, this is what I'm trying to achieve. Now you could the next thing you could write is a daily plan. What am I going to do tomorrow? OK, what is the one you could ask yourself this? What is the one thing I could do tomorrow which can move me towards my goals in, the, in September Okay, or at the end of the year? <clears throat> Furthermore, you could write down at the end of the day a quick review. OK, what did I achieve today? What went well? What didn't go so well? If I could run it back, what would I do differently? Okay. And lastly, uh, on the daily thing, a wonderful practice to do every single day is to write down one thing that you are grateful for, one thing that you can be thankful for. There is a lot of uh, robust science now that uh, has found that the, if you practice gratitude, which is what that is, being thankful for the things in your life, whether that is food on the table, a roof over your head, people that love you, uh, teammates to play against and play with, uh, a coach that is trying to help you, 
you know, classmates at school, teachers trying to help you. Uh, we can all find things to be grateful for, even in the most desperate situations. So if you can practice writing down and, uh, and really being thankful for the things that you do have in your life, you will experience more happiness and you will be you will have more energy. All right. So there's another thing that you can write down. Um, yeah. So write, writing your experiences, keeping a journal, keeping a diary, these things will help you in in ways that you cannot understand. All right. If you start writing down what you what you plan to do in the future, what you plan to do tomorrow, what you did today and what you are thankful for and you develop that practice, then things will come out of you which you didn't expect. And you will start moving each and every day, bit by bit, towards being the person or achieving the things that you want to achieve. Okay, but many, many people, the majority of people will not do it. The majority of people will start, you guys will start doing this today and tomorrow, and then you will stop. <clears throat> That's okay. But Try to remind yourself as frequently as possible that the tortoise won the race, yeah, not the hare, not the guy that went off, you know, did six hours in the gym, you know, shot a thousand shots today, worked out, next day super sore, can't even move his arms, you know, and then doesn't train for five days. Okay. Each person, the person that the person that does a little bit today and a little bit tomorrow and then a little bit more the next day and a little bit the next day and a little bit more the next day and keep slowly creeping towards their goals, that person over the course of a longer period of time is going to be successful. All right. Now, one more thing I'm going to talk about before I get on to like more basketball specific stuff is something kind of maybe it was a little bit out there for you i don't know maybe some of you are already doing it already is take cold showers take a cold shower okay especially if you live in england because the cold the water can be actually cold all right now why would you do this first of all physiologically cold the, the cold is it it is it, shocking and it will shock your body your physical body into uh, a kind of emergency mode like a fight or flight mode and it will get your blood flowing and it will force you to breathe deeply and it will start to initiate processes in your body that are protective okay so your body will physiologically change when you take cold showers to protect you and the mechanisms it uses are good for you in performance all right i won't go any deeper than that today on that stuff but physiologically cold shower is better than a hot shower okay i'm not nothing against hot showers i take hot showers sometimes but cold showers are the one but the main reason that they are the one is because uh, if you take a really cold shower uh it is like putting yourself voluntarily into a very difficult situation okay when you do that you are telling yourself i am going to do something that is hard and i'm going to get through it OK, one of the things if you if you any of you do decide to do this and you want to try it, first of all, go into the water slowly, you know, go limb by limb and then, you know, slowly get up towards your head and then turn around on your back and then control your breathing. OK, you're going to start hyperventilating and breathing very quickly to control your breathing so that you can breathe out nice and long. <sighs> if you can do that, then you will start to adjust. All right. And what you are doing is you are you are voluntarily you are by yourself putting yourself into a situation that is not easy, that is difficult. And so what is that about? That is telling you that's going to remind you that you can do difficult things. And the more difficult things that you do voluntarily, the more that you will realize that being uncomfortable is the way forwards. That is the way to success. And that the things that you thought were really hard are not actually that hard. That is a place to get to, that the things that you thought were not hard are actually, sorry, the things that you thought were really difficult are not actually that more, that difficult. And when you do start to do things that are difficult and you realize that you can actually get through them, you start looking for other stuff. Okay. Now, what are difficult situations in our real life? Maybe as a basketball player, the coach is really hard on you. Or you're trying to get onto a team which maybe you're like in England, the age brackets are under 16, under 18. 
under 14, under 16, under 18. So maybe you're the young player in that age bracket. And I don't know if you're going to make the team. You're maybe going to get put in a team that you don't want to be in, or you're going to be on the bench. You're not going to be playing the time that you want to be playing. Or in the game, someone's locking you up and you can't score and you can't do anything. Like these are difficult. These are not that difficult, but these are difficult situations for us as a player. Yeah. And so when you put yourself voluntarily into difficult situations, you realize that you can overcome them. And if you realize that, then these problems that come in front of you as a player, and, you know, we can take this to uh, studying for exams. Maybe there are concepts and ideas that you, you don't understand right now. And you just like, how can I, how can I possibly add this to my already uh, too much revision? You know, I can't possibly understand these concepts and get the grades I want. Well, if you take a step back and say, you know what, this is, this is what I was preparing for. These are the difficult situations that I want to be in. I want to be in a place where there is difficult stuff all around me because that will help me to learn that I can get through it and then I can move to a new level, okay? So take a cold shower, have a go, let me know how it goes. And I know that you will love it. You might not love it in the moment, but you will realize that difficult, uncomfortable experiences are very, very helpful for personal development. And as a basketball player, you want to put yourself in those uncomfortable situations because the only uncomfortable situations as a player in the games are the ones that matter. If you are losing by 10 points in a fourth quarter and there's six minutes left and it doesn't look like you're going to win, that is uncomfortable, especially if winning means something to you. If you're in the playoffs and you're, you know, you're getting your butt kicked and you're trying to figure out a way to win, then that is uncomfortable. If you're sitting on the bench and you want to play in the game, that is uncomfortable. If your coach is yelling at you and, tr and, 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 and demanding that you do something better or differently and you, you know, don't have the ability to do that or you don't know why he's asking that of you or whatever, whatever, that is uncomfortable. OK, so put yourself in uncomfortable situations more and more and get comfortable being uncomfortable. All right. Now I'm going to turn a little bit to basket, more basketball specific stuff now. As we uh, let me just take a moment. OK. So that was all like. General personal uh, things, which I think you can really like those things are going to help you as a player. There's no doubt if you do them, but they will also help you in other areas of your life. OK, and that's what I'm all about. Practices that can help you as a player but also can help you as a, a, a young person, okay? And a, and a person that's growing up trying to achieve success. Basketball specific, all right, here's what I would do. Make sure if you haven't, all right, if you haven't done this and it's finished already, then there's nothing you can do about it. But for next season, make sure you do it. Make sure someone's filming your games, okay? Now, as the season ends, take the last three games that you played and watch them all and take notes, OK, I advise you to watch all of the games, all of the each game as well, even the times that you are not in, because there is learning to be had from your teammates. And also uh, you could understand like a bit of context about why did you come in the game at that time? Why did you come out? Why did somebody else come in the game at that time? You might find situations that came up in these games which you didn't realize uh, were happening uh when it was happening live for you okay so take the the last three games that you played and critique them critique your individual performance what did you do well what did you not do so well whether was there anything that you didn't do that you would like to do and what would you do differently if you had another opportunity okay and what can come out of that is a plan yeah if you are not handling the ball very well in the games and you're turning it over then you you can write this down you know my ball handling wasn't good i didn't do well under pressure i wasn't very good with my left hand uh, but i was good going to my right okay now you have a plan yeah you gotta start looking at how can i improve my weak hand under pressure okay and then you start looking for ways to do that you know looking for drills on social media or coaches that you have to find the the exercises and the drills that you need to do to improve your game uh, as a as a, a um, ambidextrous two-handed player, okay. Um, <clears throat> if you can, right, cut the film 
And I say, if you can, I mean, some people on this call will know how to do that already. And some of you won't. If you don't know how to do it, then learn. OK, because that even that is a good skill to have. Uh, and it's not that hard. But what, what it will help you to do is if you cut that, um, maybe some of you will have the film cut anyway from the programs that you are in. But if you don't, then learn to cut it yourself so that you can have your clips and you can be very focused because it's great to watch a games, full games, because you will get an understanding of the ebb and the flow of the game. All right. And, and as I said, the reasons you come in and the reasons you come out and, and all that kind of stuff. But if you cut it and then you put your clips together, you will start to see patterns in your play, which you may not see uh, if you're watching the whole game. OK, so if you get all your clips together, you might realize that you're only going right or whenever you go right, you always stop and pull up instead. And, and when you go left, you tend to just try to get back on your right. Or, you know, when you're playing defense, your closeout is not fast enough or something like that. You know, you, you might notice a box out uh, pattern in your play. OK, when your clips are all close together, you will start to realize that there are patterns in the things that you are doing or not doing that you can action. And again, there is a plan. Yeah. What are you going to do? Write that down. Write down. OK, my weakness this season from looking at the last three games is boxing out or is uh, defending the ball or is help defense or finishing with my left hand or whatever, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Once you've written that down, I, and now you can set a goal. So by September, I want to be the best two handed player on my team. Okay. Or the best two handed player in the country or whatever it is. That's a goal. How are you going to do that? Right. Well, I'm going to work 15 minutes every day, two ball dribbling, moving forwards and backwards side to side. I'm going to go find some Steph Curry ball handling drills or some Kyrie Irving ball handling drills. I'm going to ask my coach what I need to do. And I'm going to find the best player that I can play to play against one-on-one -on -one every week. All right. That's a plan. Yeah. And then as you go, you are writing down how that went. All right. Um, okay. So that that's, that's the next thing after that, I would say prepare your body physically for the season. OK, so remember that we started the, the session with rest. A lot of you will have gone through a demanding season. You will have played a lot, practiced a lot. Your body needs to rest. It needs to recover. If you have any niggling injuries, like your fingers are sore or your knees are hurting or your back is hurting or, you know, you've got a slight hamstring strain or you rolled your ankle in the middle of the season and you didn't recover it properly because you wanted to play in the games. If any of that is applicable to you, use that rest time to get back to your strong self. OK, and then when you're when you when you're over that, you know, to start preparing yourself physically for the season. OK, um, one thing about working really hard, about working physically and doing, you know, the cold showers, putting yourself into the uncomfortable situations is it's going to make you mentally very strong. OK, so preparing your body physically for your season and i'm talking about i'm talking about um training physically uh this is going to help you to be stronger to be fitter on the court but it's also going to help you mentally all right because when you start to realize that you can get through barriers that you that you you thought were there you know maybe you you don't think that you can run 10 miles okay well running 10 miles is a good idea because what you can realize is that that's great for your heart it's great for your respiratory system, for your breathing, for your blood flow, for your cardiovascular base, you know, and uh, it's also mentally very, very difficult to do that. If you can do it, if you can work up to running 10 miles, you know, once a month or something in the summer or whatever it is, then again, you're learning how to break through barriers. OK, um, and 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 take a look at your environment. OK, what is around what is around in the place that you live that you can use as a as a gym? Maybe you have a gym. OK, if you have a gym, then great. You know, you've got a treadmill, you've got cardiovascular machines, you've got bikes, you've got weights, you've got the weight racks, you've got the barbells. If you've got all that stuff, then wonderful. Make a plan, get in there and get after it. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter. OK, because everybody has an environment around them where they can use something there whether it's the hills that are close to you and you can start running up the hills. If you've got a beach, you can be running up and down the beach or along the beach. 
uh, you know, whatever it is. Um, if you get out into the forest and run in the forest, do sprints, do long runs, things like that. Try to use up your environment, yeah, um, so that the 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 world becomes your playground. You know, the, the everything around you becomes like I often whenever we go to I have two little kids, right? So we're always at the park. I'm trying to find the the strong branch across the tree that can hold my weight so I can do pull ups. Yeah, I, I I would love to have a pull up bar, but I don't have one in my house. Okay, and maybe I don't want to pay the gym membership, so I'm going to go to the park and I'm going to find a tree where they have the level branch that I can jump up to. And then I'm going to do my pull up workout over there. All right. So that's something to think about. Um, somebody who I follow on social media, who I think is adding a tremendous amount of value to basketball players and coaches is a person called Ben Patrick. Uh, his name is knees over toes guy on Instagram. Uh, he has developed a series of uh, training protocols for essentially for healing knee pain okay so if any of you are experiencing knee pain uh, this coach is helping you to deal with that and uh, then after you get a, after you get through like the first phase of the training then you can start working on being very athletic okay so uh, his his stuff is easily accessible on social media um, it's it's grounded in science and you don't need any equipment to start um, working through his plans. OK, and, and uh, you know, I, I see a lot of players that have that experience knee pain. I've experienced knee pain for a, a long time in my life. It's not fun. And the more basketball you play, the more pain you get and the worse it gets. It seeps into your life and it's just not fun, man. So uh, if you are starting to experience that, I don't care what any doctor is telling you about Oscar Slatters or anything like that. It's not going away unless you take care of it. All right. So start taking care of yourself. There's one suggestion for finding somebody who can really help you with exercises and training protocols that can help with that. And, you know, for me, it's like if you're going to train and get yourself ready for the new season, focusing on your lower body, your legs, your knees, your hips and your back, your lower back, that is the that is the power, uh, the center or the power center of your body. All right. So the physical training that you do, sprint work, hill work, uh, and then the ATG stuff, the knees over the toes stuff, um, split squats and things like that, focusing on lower body strength, on joint protection and athleticism are going to be key. Like, like so I have I, I coach two teams under 18s, under 16s. If any of those, those guys goes away in the summer and really gets after it physically, they are going to play next season. All right, because uh, it's, it's just to me, the physical preparedness of young players that I'm around is not where it could be. And that's not that necessarily your fault if you're one of those people. And but you have the power to take it back now in this world of social media, where there's a lot of uh, you have a lot of access to high level trainers and people that are giving you things for free. You can really get strong and fit and flexible and mobile. Uh, by yourself okay so do it that's going to help you on the court all right okay uh i think i'm going to wrap up here in a couple of minutes and go to questions so the last thing i'm going to say is uh, a couple of general points about getting better in the off season from a basketball standpoint number one get better at both hands okay be able to do everything that you want to be able to do with both hands finish dribble get by people pass uh even shoot the ball like just i don't know if you you know some of you will know this some of you won't the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body okay your brain is a complex system a complex mechanism a complex computer and if you train both sides of your body you will become more intelligent OK, your IQ will, you know, maybe not your IQ will increase, but you will you will you will get smarter. You will learn more things and you will be able to do more stuff. And on the basketball court, one of the biggest uh, issues that I see in young players is their inability to use their weak hand. So even at the highest level, at the highest level, this is still an issue for some players. So really, really work on your weak hand. The other thing is shoot the ball a lot. OK, there's a lot of stuff out on social media and everywhere about how, you know, how you should shoot the ball. 
should, what fingers should the ball touch? Where should your elbow be? Where's a shooting pocket? You know, wh which foot should be in front of the other one? I'm not going to get into all that stuff right now. The first most important step is for you to shoot the ball, okay? Practice shooting the ball a lot from all different angles in all different uh, places uh, with your right hand, with your left hand, off the dribble, off the catch, you know, finishing um, far away shots, you know, shots that you might not even shoot in the game, you know, just be creative with your shooting practice, but also write down what you do. If you can record everything that you do and, um, and, and, and get yourself a record of your shots and your makes, um, then you can use that to review, you know, after two weeks, after four weeks, after six weeks, and you can see your progress. And you might, again, as with the video, you might see places where patterns where you don't make shots. It might be in the corner on the left side, you know, you not or, or going left off two dribbles uh, at the free throw line. I don't know what it's going to be, but if you can record what you're doing and then start to look for the patterns, then you may notice some and that can help you in your in your training and planning. OK. Uh, OK, last thing from me on this is. If your season is finished then your season is finished. Whatever happened last season is, is gone, right? Whether you were the best player on the best team and you did everything really well, or you had a horrible season and things didn't go your way, and you made lots of mistakes or, you know, whatever, it's all gone. Yeah, it's not coming back. And there's not a lot that is going to help you to be a better player right now. OK, whatever's going to happen next year is going to happen next year. Whatever's going to happen next season is going to happen next season. All you can focus on right now is what are you going to do in this moment today? What are you going to start working on to get to where you want to be? OK, so it's no problem to review the last season. And as I said, take the last three games, go over it, critique it, write down everything and then leave it. OK, take your lessons and then leave it where it was. Let the other people talk about it. OK, now focus on. You can write down what you want to achieve, get clear about where you're headed and now come back to the moment and say, this is what I need to do now and today. And for the next few days or the next week, this is what I need to focus on. And then the work is in applying yourself, making it happen and trusting that if you do put the work in, that the results will come. And they might not be immediately in September. They might not be in the next season. But if you keep working and you keep working and you keep um, staying present and consistent, then results will come. There is no question about it. All right. Uh, OK, questions. I'm done. Questions. If you want to ask a question, please write it in the chat. I will give you a few minutes um, or a minute or two to just write something down. You can send it to me directly or put it in there for everyone to see. I don't care. And I will try to respond as best I can right now. So good to see so many people here. So thank you all for taking part. There are no questions so far. So if I don't get any, I'm going to tell you about my social media and I'm going to give you an offer for something and then we're going to part ways. Okay, so I'm going to start to tell you a little bit about where you can see more of what I'm doing. Share screen. Okay, guys, so Instagram Kairos underscore performance, TikTok, uh, that's my name, Rob Newson 84 Facebook, if you just search uh, Rob Newson or Kairos performance, then you will find me. Uh, my website, kairos-performance.com. And if you want to send me an email, ask me any questions offline, head coach at kairosperformance.com. I think I do have, actually have a couple of questions. So I'm going to leave that up there for... Uh, 10 more seconds. If you want to get in touch, guys, 
send me a you know, follow me first of all on uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Send me a question there. Uh, I'll try to deal with it as best I can to help you. Um, and what else? Yeah, I'm going to tell you something in a minute. Let me just get back to these. Uh, let's stop sharing quickly. How do I do this? Stop share. Okay. All right, here we go. <clears throat> what do you do when you're having a bad game? <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> uh, okay. The first thing I would say, my first reaction to that is exact, exactly that, right? Be grateful. First of all, that you get to play the game that you love. Everybody has bad games. And if the longer you play, the more of them you're going to have. Okay. The more bad games you're going to have. The whole point of playing is that you are, you are searching to, to play that perfect game, right? You are searching to have that perfect performance and, you know, be at the top. It, but in order to get there, you're going to have to have bad games. So one mistake that I think we all make is that when we are having uh, poor performance or when we are not doing so well, is we start to uh, we start to get mad at ourselves and we start to go, oh, why is this happening? I'm, you know, I put in all this work, I tried all this stuff, and it's not working. Um, and and so then, what are you doing in that moment? In that moment, you are now focusing on the past. You are spending energy looking at what happened and putting all of your attention over there. And meanwhile, things are happening right in front of you. Okay, so. Uh, then what will happen next, right, is that you will do worse. You're definitely going to do worse if you start focusing on all, all of the bad things that just happened in the game, okay? So I think, first of all, what comes is an appreciation for getting to play the game that you love and an appreciation for wins and losses and good games and bad games. Once you can, once you can start to uh, access that kind of energy, you will start to turn around your performance, OK, and, and just by virtue of enjoying yourself more whilst you're out there and it not being it not being predicated on whether you do well or not, like I'm getting old. Right. So my days are numbered with the amount of games that I'm going to get to play or the times that I can play basketball. Every time I play basketball, I absolutely love it. It is like it's, a, it's an amazing experience for me. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be out on the floor and run around and shoot hoops. I feel frustrated no not frustrated like i just feel sad sometimes when i see kids out there totally missing the 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 opportunity that they have and and because they're not playing as well as they expect to okay and that's the other thing is your expectations will hold you back okay don't expect to play games well every time it doesn't happen watch the nba watch your favorite player you know watch russell westbrook as a good example he's not doing very well lately is he all right, that this is a pretty good player. So remember that everybody has bad games. You know, it happens. And the only thing that you can do is focus on the present moment, be thankful for where you are, and then say, right, let's, do, let's make the next play. Let me do something for somebody else. Let me, if I'm not scoring, or I'm not doing so well, let me set screens. Let me make the pass for the shooter. Let me cut to the basket to clear out space. Let me guard somebody so I can shut somebody down. Let me go get a rebound. Let me box out so somebody else can get a rebound. Like try to let me shout from the bench so I can be the best bench player in the game. Like let me contribute in another way, which isn't predicated on whether the ball goes in or not. Okay. So those are some things that you can do to improve that. Okay. Uh, coach, how to be mentally prepared every game and how to deal with pressure. All right. <clears throat> uh, establish a routine is number one. OK, establish a routine that you that you use. And I suggest you do this as much as possible for practices and games. And it doesn't matter the magnitude of the game or the magnitude of the practice. Try to keep your routines consistent. OK, routines will help you to uh, refocus. They will help you to remember and bring you kind of um, a little bit calmer. You know, because it's kind of things that are, are normal to you and they remind you of who you are and what you can do. And routine will help you to 
um, understand that there is not so much pressure and that the pressure that you feel you put on yourself. Okay, so as, that's why I am saying one of the things that you should do or you should at least look at as a young player in the off season is develop a meditation practice because you're asking me how to be mentally prepared every game. Meditate every day. If you do that, you are going to start to access the present moment. You are going to start to be appreciative of who you are and what you have. And if you can access that kind of energy, you are going to love playing the game. And people that love playing the game and love being out there have endless possibilities to be really good. So probably, you know, there's two suggestions. Develop a routine that you use before the games. Also after the games, you might review it and then develop your meditation practice. Um, I always tend to get pressured when I'm on the court and it affects my game badly. Can you please give me some tips or practices? I just dealt with that, yeah. So again, that's the same thing. Um, for eight-year-old, what's best basketball skill to teach first uh, is a love for the game. Love enjoying the game. Bring that person to the game and make sure, if you're the coach or if you're involved in designing the practices in the games for those young kids, uh, this is kind of a question for a different area, but make sure that it's enjoyable. You know, Do everything that you can to help that kid smile and love the game. Don't teach them anything. If they love the game and they develop a love for the game, then they will learn everything that they need to learn. Okay. Um, as a big man, what skill should I focus on? Well, I don't know who you are. I don't know what skills you have. Um, so focus your focus on being helpful as a player on your team. Ask yourself this. What do I need to do to help my team win? What does my team need from me to help my team win and help my team be better? Okay, your answer will come to you. If you don't know the answer and you can't think of anything, then the next people to ask are your teammates and your coach. What can I do for you? If you really ask that question, you go to your teammates and you say, guys, I want to help you win so bad and I, don't, I will do anything to be of service to you tell me what i need to do people will tell you and then go and develop those skills and see if that will that will work okay and then when you finish doing all those skills you say right what's next what do i need to help you guys because ultimately as a player that is what is what is being a player is all about helping your team win the game all right so uh unless i see you play i don't know what is you know there is no cookie cutter for for players anymore you you got to be versatile you've got to have multiple skills use both hands be able to shoot the ball play defense do all that good stuff so um ask your teammates ask your coach uh, and and all and that the answers will come how to be a good shooter this is the last one i'm taking and we're wrapping up because we always almost got an hour unless anybody throws another one in if you're sticking around i'll answer the questions uh how to be a good shooter um first of all uh, again, like the person asked, you know, what to do with the young player, you know, enjoy shooting the ball, enjoy practicing. That's really important. If you don't enjoy practice, you're going to have a hard time practicing shooting, uh, especially, you know, shooting is one of those things that if I, I, I consider myself to be a good shooter, especially when I was younger. And you can put a lot of pressure on yourself if you're a shooter, because if you start to miss, you start to feel like your secret weapon, the thing that you're really good at isn't working. And then you, you can get really anxious and, uh, and depressed and, you know, kind of angry at yourself because you are, you are not doing the thing that you feel you need to do to help your team. So enjoy the game. Enjoy shooting the ball, even if you miss. Enjoy practicing. Do things in your practice that you enjoy, yeah? If, don't, like, don't feel compelled. Don't feel like you have to go to the court and shoot 2,000 shots to be a good shooter right? It, that's not true. What you need to do is you need to really enjoy shooting the ball in all kinds of different ways and enjoy solving the problem of making shots in the games. I mean, you know, there is so many things around shooting about technique and all this kind of stuff. And actually, I am going to share some, some exercises and drills in the next two weeks, uh, which are about being a good shooter 
uh, that are related to feel, okay, that are related to controlling the basketball. So I will share those with you um, and, and, you know, just follow me on social media. You'll see those come up and I'll share a whole workout on shooting the basketball. Uh, that is definitely going to help you, okay? All right. <clears throat> How do I know I'm doing well in basketball? I mean, if you're loving it. I mean... What else is there? You know, I, I know that we all want to do really well. Yeah, we all want to have success. You're obviously going to know there are going to be markers in your team about your level of success. So markers are playing time. You know, if you're if you're playing, you it's giving an indication that you are doing well. If the coaches trust you and they want you to do more. They, then you're doing well. If your team is winning, then you're doing well. But sometimes you can you can be doing really well, but your team might be losing. You know, sometimes there are players, great players on terrible teams and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, so sometimes it is the case that those things aren't the greatest indicator of whether you're doing well. That's why I say, are you really enjoying the game? You know, are you really enjoying... The, I, for me, is like the most important... Uh, um, measurement of success is do you love what you do you know because if you love what you do then you can just do it all the time and the more that you love it then the more creative you can be with solutions to the problems that come up yeah so if you are experiencing some kind of problem in your team where you're not playing you know if you really like training then have a look try to have a look at why you're not playing you know i shared a video on that today uh, on on um, TikTok, yeah. So I said, uh, if you want more playing time, cut hard to the basket, yeah. Move off the ball, uh, know what your team is doing offensively and defensively, box out and defend the ball, yeah. If you can do those things, then you're going to play more, all right. So go over the videos as I suggested of your last games, and then have a look at are you doing all those four things? You're definitely not doing all of them all of the time. So improve from where you are to where you're going to to where you want to be and then come back to me and ask for more or come back to your coach and ask for more feedback on, on your performance. All right. That's how I would say that summer. Uh, we have a game tomorrow, sir. Can you wish us good luck? NSDGA Eagles. I wish you luck. I hope that you all have a great time and that you do it together, that you trust one another, that you you just you know you 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 work together as a unit yeah and if you're on the court or you're not on the court you're on the bench or you know you if you, even if you're injured and you don't get to play in any of the game that you are part of the team and you go out there and you look across the halfway line at the other team and you look in their eyes and you know that whatever they throw at you you are going to be able to take it and it doesn't matter if you get up 20 or down 20 you're going to keep coming relentlessly you're going to play hard you're going to take a charge you're going to steal the ball you're going to do anything that you can do to win the game and at the end of the game when the buzzer sounds you will know that you gave everything so the result you know it will take care of itself win or lose you will move to the next day and you will go and get better again okay we're just going to stop there okay thank you so much for everybody here's my offer for any young players that are out there listening to this um send me a three minute video of you playing in a game okay you're gonna i need to don't send me a full game and ask me to find you you know in minute 31 or whatever clip the video and send me a three minute chunk of when you're playing in the game make sure i know who you are your number and whatever identifier there is on the video and i will give you some feedback on your performance okay uh if you can get your video on youtube that would be very helpful so send me a message on instagram um or email me and just say look here's my video link can you help me and i will um, I will watch that video and I will make a video for you with some feedback on your performance to help you start working towards your, your next one. All right, guys, look out for more from me. Yeah. Thank you so much for being around. Uh, and if you do have any questions again, send me a message and, uh, I will be sending you all an email very soon to update you on, on stuff that's going to happen soon. All right. Love to.